That's what I call a marriage made in heaven right there. So why, why are there two trees in one hole? Why is, what's going on here? This is bizarre. Why are you doing this? Oh, some of you know, some of you know, some of you know. Many of you don't. That's why I'm making the video. Okay, so what do we have here? We have avocado trees. We have two different kind of trees. We have a lamhas tree right here. Uh, as you can see, you probably, people that are really astute know what time of year it is because they can look in there and see the buds swelling. It is February. We're getting ready for a big growth push real soon here. Flowering, followed by fruiting, followed by top growth. Um, we've got ourselves a lamb hoss. Lamb hoss is a fruit that will fruit from May. And well, it'll be edible May through about October here in Northern California. And, uh, but, but the fruit that is made from these flowers this year in April and May will need an entire year to size up and be ready to eat the following May. So now it's uh, February of 2021. These will flower and fruit in about two months, three months, and they will not be edible until about May of uh, 2022. So that's, that's how they work, all right? Now, what do we have next to it? This is an A flowering variety right here. So to complement the fruit production on this tree, it would ideally be married to a B flowering tree, which flowers on opposite um, timing. Basically, it's the male. Nature designed it as such that it didn't want cousins sleeping with cousins. And so uh, the flowers on one tree would be cousins sleeping with cousins. So it discourages that. It wants some, some diversity in its gene pool. And the way it promotes that is by uh, not forcing the trees so much. Avocados can be self-pollinating, but not, uh, not vigorously. Um, they, would, they have much better chances of extreme pollination and fruit set when you have opposite flower types, thereby promoting different genes from different trees to mix, which is really good for diversity of the trees, which is really good as a survival strategy of uh, all things out there in the natural world per Darwinistic principles. So um, does that explain it well enough? So anyway, uh, that's an A variety, A flowering variety. This is a B flowering variety. This is a surprise avocado. It's also swelling up, getting ready to blow up. Big, beautiful, fat little trunk on that. I love seeing the fat trunks. And uh, that's going to the surprise variety. Is uh, These are both uh, new offsprings of the lamb hoss is like a hoss, but it gets more fruit production on the tree at an earlier age than hoss. And therefore it's wonderful for those reasons. The surprise is an offspring of the hoss avocado and it has some Mexican descent in it. It has a thinner skin, a darker skin, and it fruits earlier. And it's supposedly a little more cold hardy than the hoss tree. Both these trees are hardy to at least 26 degrees. And uh, as they get larger, they'll become even hardier than that. A really big freeze might come someday. And if it does, when these trees are bigger, only the small little limbs will die off. It'll sprout from the, from the fatter trunk. Like you'll see these in spring after a big freeze and a bunch of dead wood on top. And the, the dead wood on top will protect the tree. So, you know, as long as you're not getting down to 26 very often, you got a really good chance of having success with these trees. So uh, there were studies done uh, now let's start with avocado production in commercial orchards. The rule of thumb is you want a B flowering variety to pollinate all of the A flowering varieties uh, of which the typical tree, the avocado is a Haas avocado, it's an A flowering variety. The typical uh, pollinator would be a B flowering variety Zutana. That's probably the most common. Bacon's one, uh, Nabal is a B. Uh, Surprise is a B, Fuerte is a B. Anyway, so there's a lot of Bs out there, but there's even more As, it seems. And so the rule of thumb for the orchards is to have one tree per acre, one flowering pollinator per acre of trees. And you get about 100 trees per acre, so one out of those 99 would be the pollinator. 
and then that was sufficient to pollinate the grove. They don't want to load the whole entire grove up with the pollinator trees because the, the pollinator fruit is not uh, marketable as much as the, the Haas avocados. So, but there were studies done where back in the 50s and from the avocado source uh, handbook, you can look that up on the internet. You can find this on the internet somewhere. Maybe I'll even make a link. I'll make a link. I'll find it, put it, make a link on the bottom. You can check it out. And there were studies done that they caged these, uh, these trees together. And when they had overlapping foliage on each other, they picked up an even higher percentage of fruit set. And they think that's because obviously this proximity for the bees to go back and forth, the closer they are, the more likely the bees will go back and forth to each of the plants. But also uh, they think in that, in the sense that with trees that are overlapping, then insects that actually can't fly, like ants and things would walk around and spread pollen that way. So uh, people ask me, well, how close do the trees need to be, Gary? I say, well, commercial orchards plant one per acre. Uh, so, you know, think about how big of an acre is. It's 53,000 square feet, I think. Uh, so, you know, they can be pretty far apart and still help each other. But what's the most ideal? The most ideal is being on top of each other to make sweet love to each other, to help each other pollinate, to create that wonderful offspring that we love so much. Yummy in our tummy avocados. So, uh, a lot of gardens don't have a lot of space for multiple trees. As you can see, this is a, it's a work in progress here. Um, and they only have one spot, but they wanna have uh, two different trees for pollination purposes, but also you can get a longer uh, period of edible fruit. As you see, like this one doesn't, the lamb hoss doesn't start being edible until about May, whereas the surprise will start being edible in about February or March. So you get a few more months of production when you have opposite varieties. You can even, you can even uh, have that further, like a Jim Bacon tree will be even earlier fruiting uh, as a bee variety. So you can have avocados almost all year from two different trees, depending upon which ones you get. So here we are doing the most ideal thing of all for overlap of the foliage. And we are planting two trees in one spot because of lack of space in this garden. And uh, so this is what you do. You have a small garden and you really want to boost your fruit production. You also want two varieties. So you have fruiting throughout the bulk of the year. Now, beyond that, this is another good example of kind of showing you how uh, the avocado roots, uh, what they do. And you can see they're really just a bunch of little hair white roots and they just run around and they just, just gollop up. They just love eating this stuff here, right? We have a lot of organic material here. We have a little bit of granitic soil mixed with fir bark mulch. And so um, they are surface rooting trees. And so you want to encourage lots of uh, compost. This is just tree compost from the guys that ship stuff from the trees out in the street. You get that for free. And in this case, we have really good, high quality fir bark um, potting mix. But you want to have lots and lots of decomposing material around these trees. And uh, the other thing the avocados absolutely love, their own leaf drop. They love having their own leaf drop falling down into the mulch zone of the tree. It mimics uh, natural forest conditions, which they're used to in the highlands of Mexico. And then you'll emulate that and you'll have a greater success. And what ends up happening is all these roots will come up to the surface. They love oxygen and they love uh, decomposing, rotting vegetation. And they will uh, come up and they'll, they'll eat that alive. And so we're creating a little bit of a mound here when we're all done. I'm not gonna show you that, but video will be too long. But anyway, trust me, a little bit of a mound action is good because a mound will create more oxygenated conditions, really good drainage, which is important on these trees. And um, the other thing you need to know, might as well cover everything. Why not? We're here. Let's do it. Let's do it. And then uh, we have, uh, what Gary, what's the white stuff on the tree? That, that thing looks sick. I don't want this tree. That's just paint. That's one third white latex paint mixed with two thirds water and uh, we have sprayed the tree down just like Jeff Spicoli's nose in Fast Times at Ridgemont High so he doesn't get sunburnt and these trees don't want to be sunburnt either. This tree has evolved in a forested condition and uh, in a forested condition it never has low angle light hitting the uh, bark and so it never really developed its own sun protection 
because it really only gets sun from directly above. By the time the sun comes sideways, other trees are shading it in its natural habitat. So it never really adapted to have really tough, you know, sun resistant skin. So we need to uh, mimic that, or we need to create that for it, give it that protection. See here, this did not get painted in time. See it turn black. This plant will stop transmitting all of its wonderful juices through here. This part of the plant will slow its growth down because of that, because now it's only relying on half of the stem that didn't get sunburned. That's why you do it. Now, once the trees are really big and vigorous and have tons of leaves, you really don't have to you know, worry about that. Uh, but if they do defoliate at time of transplant, you want to get out there and paint them real quick, because otherwise it'll be a cascading event where the trees go downhill. Anyway, that's about all we're going to talk about today. But this is a great example of doubling up a couple trees, A and B, to help each other make sweet love, make avocados, and make the world a wonderful place for everyone who loves that kind of fruit.